Women's Day is a fall took on special meaning in Ottawa as they announced the arrival of South African President Nelson Mandela at what will likely be his last state visit to Canada. In an opulent ceremony, complete with red carpet and reserved only for heads of state, Mandela and his wife, Gracia Michelle, arrived at Rideau Hall, the official residence of the Governor General. Preceded by a long motorcade of dignitaries and mounted RCMP escort, Mandela and his wife rode the tree-lined driveway in an open horse-drawn carriage, finally arriving at the steps of Rideau Hall. They were warmly greeted by Governor General Romeo Leblanc and a most appreciative crowd. Following ceremonial protocol, Mandela, who has been described as the world's most famous prisoner, inspected the National Defense Headquarters honor guard while a cannon boomed in the distance. has watched with admiration the momentous changes in your country. Once many nations shunned South Africa as an outcast. Now a new spirit is transforming the continent and you have been at the heart of this change. Much remains to be accomplished. There are still too many wars, too many injustices and too much poverty. But the course is set for the emergence of a peaceful, democratic, and prosperous Africa. Your visit will help our two countries to strengthen even further our friendship and cooperation. You will be meeting many Canadians, and you will feel their friendship for your country their commitment to the values we share and their admiration for your own historic role as a builder of freedom and dignity. Mr. President, Madame, you honor our country by your presence. Thank you. Friends, on several occasions I have made a statement which I want to repeat here that one of the striking features in the world today is the emergence of men and women who have chosen the entire world as the theater of their operations, who fight injustice wherever it is to be found in the world. We have been the beneficiaries of uh, that feature in world politics 
where people many thousands of miles across the seas have uh, completely identified themselves with the struggles of, a, of the people of a country they have never visited, they have never seen. But uh, whose devotion uh, to the preservation of human rights is so deep that uh, they identified with any community that is in that situation. We have been beneficiaries of that new trend. And uh, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to come and thank uh, the people of Canada directly for the enormous assistance they have given us. If it were not for that support and the support of the rest of the international community, the struggle to overthrow white supremacy in, the, in our country would have been extremely expensive, both from the point of view of uh, the destruction of the infrastructure, the death of innocent civilians, men, women, children, and the aged, and uh, the bitterness it would create for many decades to come, your support has saved us from that scourge. And I want uh, to thank you on behalf of my wife and I and the people of South Africa. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the assistance that you have given. Thank you. And then to the obvious gratitude and delight of the 100 admiring guests invited by the South African High Commission, Mandela demonstrated why he has become so beloved by the world as he stepped into the crowd to greet and speak with individuals. This block at Elgin and Lisker streets was packed. Hundreds of people swelled around the Human Rights Monument hours before Mandela arrived with Professor John Humphrey's widow, Dr. Margaret Klinsler Humphrey, to unveil a commemorative plaque honoring her late husband's tireless efforts toward universal human dignity. ...in other countries as we struggled with our own issues here in Canada. In conjunction with celebrations marking the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights by the United Nations, Mandela would honor Canadian John Peter Humphrey, former professor of law at McGill University, who originally drafted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This ceremony, appropriately enough, took place at the world's only monument to human rights created by artist Melvin Charney, and was also the only community event during Mandela's visit to Ottawa. I continue to sing of other loves, places, moments when I'm furious, when you are pale and I'm strong, as we come one to another. The ethnics at our door malingering with heritage, my solid breath like stones breaking. At a railway station, making much ado about much, this boulder and rocky mountain, the CPR heaving with a head tax, as I am Chinese in a crowd, Japanese at the camps. It is also World War II, panting, I am out of breath. So I keep on talking with blood coursing through my veins, the hearts call for employment equity, the rhapsody of police shootings in Toronto, this gathering of the stars one by one, codifying them and calling them planets, one country really, or galaxies of province after province, a distinct society too, 
Quebec or Newfoundland, their territories, how far we make a map out of our solitudes as we are still Europe, Asia, Africa. And the Aboriginal in me suggests love above all else, the bears, configuration in the sky, other places, events, a turbaned RCMP, these miracles, my heritage and quest, my heart throbbing, voices telling me how much I love you, you love me, and we are always bringing surprises like vandalism at a Jewish cemetery or Nelson Mandela's visit to Ottawa as I raise a banner high on Parliament Hill crying, welcome, we are, you are, O oh Canada. Oxfam Canada is honored to join you today in declaring that dignity, equality, and justice are fundamental rights of every person. The past 50 years have witnessed quiet, determined, and often dangerous work in pursuit of these rights. With you, we salute the efforts of many people, especially John Peters Humphrey and our honored friend, President Nelson Mandela, who have defended these rights around the world. Oxfam Canada is proud to have participated in the South African people's victory over apartheid. As we continue our work, our basic rights work, we realize that people's basic needs must rank as basic human rights. We see a world where the gap between the rich and the poor is growing, where over one billion people live in absolute poverty, where people's basic human rights, basic human needs for food, water, shelter, safety, and the chance to build a future are not being met. We call on everyone to recognize these fundamental needs as basic human rights. The Oxfam Global Charter for Basic Human Rights elevates basic needs to basic rights and serves as a framework for our work. In a world where the struggle for human rights still knows its daily setbacks, celebration is important and an encouragement for all of us for the years ahead. Nelson Mandela, perhaps more than any living person, is a symbol for those who are willing to dedicate their lives and often their freedom for the defense of basic human rights. He stands as a living monument to the commitment and courage of human rights defenders throughout the world. The South African Rainbow Association was born out of the anti-apartheid movement here in Canada. Therefore, it is honored to accept on behalf of all community groups throughout the country who played a role in the anti-apartheid struggle. The recognition that is bestowed upon Canadian jurist John Peter Humphrey. We can assume quite rightly that it was no easy task for the people who deliberated on the semantics of what constitutes basic civil, economical, political, and social rights and freedoms of every person. What these freedoms are were finally agreed upon by the United Nations General Assembly, now contained in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, thanks to the persistent and tireless efforts of persons like John Peter Humphrey. Its preamble states that the declaration is meant to serve, and I quote, as a common standard of achievement for all people and all nations. The South African government at the time flaunted all these principles. The same year the United uh, Declaration of Human Rights was signed and embarked on a rule of tyranny for over 40 years. The history of that tenury is well known, but has now been overcome. The Human Rights Tribute recognizes the immense role NGOs, labor and professional unions, student groups, the spirit of First Nations peoples, and others grassroots communities 
have played in the dismantling of apartheid. As the man who galvanized the world against apartheid, President Nelson Mandela arrived with his wife Gracia Michelle at his side, smiling and waving to the masses of enthusiastic cheering people who had finally been rewarded for their hours of patience. This is a proud moment for the Board of Directors of the Canadian Tribute to Human Rights and for all who are gathered here this morning to welcome one of the most beloved and admired persons in the world today. On, be on behalf of all Canadians, I offer a warm welcome to you, President Mandela, and to you, Mrs. Michelle. Thank you for coming to our tribute to unveil the plaque in honor of John Peters Humphrey on the 50th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The Canadian Tribute to Human Rights is our place where we can assemble to express the struggle of all people for human rights and freedoms. We shared in your long and arduous struggle for the rights of your people in South Africa. We continue to support the struggles of people in Canada and throughout the world for dignity and rights. Because until all rights are respected, none are secure. Please accept our gift of a Canadian Inukshuk with its outstretched arms. It was created especially for you as a symbol of our welcome and to say that no land is barren and we are never alone. Thank you. Honorable Bill Commander, Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great privilege as a South African to be invited to unveil this memorial in honor of an exemplary Canadian. Had I not been on my way to your parliament, I would have wanted to devote more time to the occasion. John Humphrey was one of those rare men and women who make the world the theater of their operations. As an architect of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, he became a citizen not only of Canada, but also of the world. <clears throat> for those who had to fight for their freedom, such as ourselves, the Declaration vindicated the justice of our cause. There is therefore special pleasure for us in acknowledging John Humphrey's contribution to the advancement of humanity. Our visit to Canada also brings an opportunity to thank the Canadian people for their steadfast support through the years of struggle and now as we rebuild our country. Having benefited from your commitment and that of the entire international community to the principle that human rights are the rights of all people everywhere, South Africa now works wherever it can to implement the perspectives contained in the Declaration. Though we can celebrate many advances in the frontiers of political freedom in the past 50 years, millions in our country still live in conditions that prevent them from the full enjoyment 
of the rights that they have been formally accorded. In many respects, the gap between those who are secure in their rights and those who are not is growing. The best tribute that we could pay to a person such as John Humphrey is to dedicate ourselves to the eradication of poverty, disease, hunger, violence, and insecurity wherever in the world these occur. That is why the developing countries are working together and seeking closer cooperation with industrialized countries, such as Canada, to create a new world order which will help make poverty and underdevelopment something of the past. May this monument inspire all who see it to join hands in a partnership for world peace, prosperity, and equity. I thank you. May I ask Mr. Jeffrey Simpson and Dr. Margaret Humphrey to please come forward and to unveil this wonderful plaque with President Mandela. is representing this morning the Canadian diplomatic tradition of activism personified in the respect to the Universal Declaration by John Humphrey and also Dr. Margaret Kunstler, I know her as Margaret, is assisting as the widow of Professor Humphrey, but we wish to acknowledge her in her own right as a long-serving community-oriented physician in Montreal with a priority on women's primary health care. Also, as a wonderful hostess, a loving person who has taught and nurtured so many in her home generously and who continues to doing this, Margaret is simply irrepressible. Thank you very much. This plaque is going to be installed next to the other three plaques that you see on the side of the monument here.
Mr. Mandela, his visit here, it's a very spiritual and emotional to see this man who struggled and fought and he persevered and was very determined in the love that he had for his people and for a dignity of human rights and freedom. And, and we share a common history regardless of the fact that our lands are separated, but our peoples have shared a common history of the struggle for survival in our own lands, the oppressions that we've suffered and the pains of suffering that we have had by colonizers who've come into our land. And it's really nice to see that Mr. Mandela, his people, as of my grandfather, what he said, it's nice to meet a brother who's finally found freedom. I'm just becoming very, very interested in human rights, and I realize that we're very privileged here in Canada, and there are so many people around the world who are suffering from oppression and uh, many, many difficulties. And I respect uh, Nelson Mandela so very, very much. I think he's been a, just a guiding light to all of us. All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. <coughs> Elements in Elements in the Elements in heaven the light of light. So that's right, freedom. Yeah. Freedom. 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 Sì, sì, sì.